welcome back to another episode of Oh Shoot. I'm your host, Cassidy Lynn, and we're back with another episode. This episode, we're talking about trends. And if I'm being honest, okay, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I am recording this episode on Sunday night. Well, it's Sunday afternoon and my episodes come out on Monday. So I really procrastinated this episode. However, it was 1000% in my favor because we have a new social media app that literally launched this week. And honestly, if I hadn't procrastinated this episode, I probably wouldn't be able to talk about it so soon. So look at that. We're going to be talking about just different trends on social media, trends that are going on in photography that you need to know about. So we're going to dive into a bunch of fun trends this episode. So if you guys know me, I'm like a trend girly. I really like new current things. Like I feel like I'm always changing things based on trends, like what I wear, how I do my hair, like literally everything I do is based on like what's popular, which is good and bad. So this is going to be a fun episode for me because I really like to talk about this stuff. And if you guys listen to this podcast, I'm sure you kind of like trends to you like to keep up with what's current. So we're going to get into it. I wanted to give you guys a few life updates. It's been not that long. It's literally been like a week, but I feel like I always have new things for you guys. So the first and probably biggest life update I've had in a while is we bought a new house. Yes. So we actually, when Charlie was on the podcast for the confessions episode, like two weeks ago, he almost said, well, he did say that we bought a house and I had to edit it out because I was like, I didn't tell everyone yet. So yes, we bought a new house. We just got the keys like yesterday, I think, or two days ago. So we are very excited. This week is moving week. So we're going to get all of our stuff moved in. But it's just like a bigger house. It doesn't need as much renovating. So the house that we're currently in, we literally renovated it for basically the two years that we've been living in it. So this new house doesn't have nearly as much that needs to be done. Like basically we can move our stuff in right away and it's basically perfect, which is nice. So yeah, we're excited about that. So we bought a new house. The other thing is I mentioned last week that I was going to New Jersey to visit Charlie's family. We did that and I got to check off something that's been on my bucket list for a while, which is watching the New York City fireworks for 4th of July. So I watched the fireworks from like the river in New York City and they were amazing. I'm not like the type of person that's like really into fireworks, but I was really into these fireworks, guys. Like literally the best fireworks I've ever seen in my entire life. I was like a little nervous about the crowds and like getting in and out of the city. It ended up being okay. We got lost a little bit, but it's fine. It was an adventure. So that was really fun. The only other life update I have for you guys, I have some new merch and my hope is that I'm going to launch it next week. So I'm hoping that like by the time next week, next week's episode comes out, the merch has like a launch date. I want to just release it next week because it's really cute. I have these probably editing shorts and a probably editing crew neck and they match. I have two different colors. Literally so cute, but also so applicable to right now because I have so much to edit. I'm literally always editing. So yeah, got some new merch coming your way. Okay, let's get into it. So we're going to jump right into talking about this new social media app, which is called Threads. At this point, I'm sure you guys have heard of it. If you haven't, I'm going to fill you on, fill you in on what it is. So basically Threads is so similar to Twitter. If you ever had a Twitter, like back in the day, or you currently have a Twitter, it's very similar to the point where it's a little concerningly similar. Like it's like basically Twitter, but it's really nice because it's an Instagram app. So like it's linked with your Instagram threads is. So it's a little bit different in that sense. But basically when you look at the layout of it, like the concept, it literally is Twitter. So 
it's a text-based platform and you have the option to post photos and videos, but from my experience so far, the word and the text-based stuff does pretty well. Although something that I was actually just talking to one of my friends about, I kind of wonder if threads is going to continue to be a thing because of how hard it is to grab attention nowadays, especially on social media. That's why everybody's transitioned to videos because like that is the most interesting thing to watch and see on social media. So part of me wonders how popular threads is actually going to be because it's, it's not nearly as like mind interesting, interesting as something like TikTok is. So that's just a little side note, something I've been thinking about. Um, but it is text-based each thread. So like when you tweet something in this case, it's called a thread. So when you thread something, it is only 500 characters. That's your limit. So not too long, but also like that's decently long. So it's not like you can write like paragraphs upon paragraphs, but it definitely like is not trying to have you put these novels out there. Okay. So very similar, I would say to Twitter in that sense as well. Um, Threads has the same navigation and aesthetic as Instagram. It is an app made by the owners of Instagram. So it has that same Instagram feel, which I think is a huge benefit to Threads because it's something that its users are already comfortable and familiar with. So that's a nice aspect of Threads for sure. You can post directly from Threads onto your Instagram stories. And I think this is a super smart tactic from the threads and Instagram app perspective, because you're basically intertwining these apps, making them almost like you can't have one without the other. Like that's kind of what it feels like right now. Like if you have Instagram, you have threads because you can link them like a a super crucial thing that threads did, which I think totally changed the game like for why people downloaded it so quickly is because when you get threads, it will ask you, do you want to follow everyone that you follow on Instagram? And if you say yes, your feed is already curated and made up of people that you already follow and care about and are invested in. So it's, it's almost a little bit like cheating, like Instagram kind of cheated and made this platform and made it super easy just to like hop over there, follow all the people you already follow. Like it's kind of like they just like fast tracked the whole app and just like kind of took it, made like made Instagram and just like put it over here on the side. It's like, here's a different version of Instagram with all the people you already know. But I think that was a really important part of launching threads and getting accounts set up because now I follow all the people I already follow on Instagram I look at what they're threading. I look at what they're saying. It's different content than what is going out on Instagram and TikTok. It's like almost more unfiltered. Like people are referring to threads right now as kind of like being on people's private stories. Like it's kind of more unhinged, unfiltered. And that's kind of the vibe that threads is giving right now. And I like it. Like I really like that side of it. I think it's such a smart platform. I think the way that Threads was launched is genius. Other things about Threads, you can control who can mention and reply to your Threads, similar to Instagram. You can block people, and if you block people on Instagram already, they're already blocked on your Threads and, you know, vice versa. You also can mute people, so if you follow someone and you see their threads and you're like, I'm not into it. Just mute them. That's an option. And you can filter like hidden words as well. So if, you know, I don't know if people are always mentioning you and saying something about literally, I don't know the color blue, let's say for some reason you just don't want someone to say something about the color blue to you. You can filter the word blue and any tweet I literally just called it a tweet. Any thread that has the word blue in it automatically will get hidden from you and you won't be able to see it in your thread replies. 
So another cool thing about the Threads feed is it's not just these original threads from the people you follow. You can see the threads that the people you follow are replying to. So you can see the original thread that that person that you follow saw, and then you'll see the person that you follow's reply right underneath it. People can repost threads. It's kind of like a retweet. So if like your favorite creator found uh, an inspirational quote, they can repost it and then that'll get shown to you as well. So, I mean, Threads is really doing something right here, in my opinion. Threads was downloaded 30 million times in 16 hours. The only like app recently that has surpassed that was a, I think it's called Chatbot or something like that. It's like an AI app that a lot of people got a little while ago and it literally I think it either said that it surpassed it or it was the same as the downloads for that I think it was more than the downloads for that so 30 million 30 million users in 16 hours which is insane the people that are top influencers on Twitter so like um why can't I think of any one of them was Ellen DeGeneres so like the top followed people on Twitter which Right now, uh, we don't really like Ellen anymore, but you know, you know what I mean? She's like the top followed person on Twitter. They went over and these top followed people that were on Twitter are now on threads and now they're threading and posting a lot. And that just shows that people are viewing threads as a very close competitor to Twitter. And a lot of people are saying that threads is the Twitter killer. And honestly, I kind of have to agree. It's, it's so similar. And actually I read an article before, um, recording this episode that said that Twitter like sued threads or is in the process of like filing a lawsuit against threads because it's like so similar to Twitter to the point where it's like, I don't know if it's allowed. So that's a little bit of tea for you. Okay. If you want to delete your threads, You also have to delete your Instagram. So this is like one thing that people are a little bit hesitant about is the fact that if you delete threads, like let's say you don't want it anymore, your threads account, you also delete your Instagram account at the same time, which I could see like a lot of people not wanting to do that. Like you don't want, you know, there's one or the other, but like you don't want to necessarily get rid of both. Some people probably do, but you know what I mean. So Instagram said that they're looking into fixing this so that that's not an issue anymore. Um, So let me give you some of my opinions on threads. Um, I already said it, but I honestly really like it. There is something about it that does feel more raw, unfiltered, unhinged. Um, I think it's really stretching for people to not rely on photos and videos and really have to like... (laughs) put a little bit of personality behind it. You know what I mean? Like you have to get pretty creative with your words and be pretty good with your words to have threads that pop off or just like have interesting content. So I like it personally. I think it's going to last. Um, so another app that popped up a while ago, but now isn't as popular as be real. It was really popular. Like I feel like last summer, but then once summer kind of ended, it stopped being as popular And I think the reason that that didn't work was because of just like people got tired of it. I think it was such a summer thing. um, And it's almost like romanticizing your life a little bit is kind of what Be Real felt like. And once you, you know, the summer ends, I felt like it kind of just dropped off. But I think a huge thing that's going to make threads stick around is the fact that it's linked to Instagram. I don't think there was anything smarter that could have been done. And obviously like, Instagram has an advantage like they have this gigantic app that everyone uses so it's like here let's create another app that is kind of just like a complementary app to Instagram we're going to make them like connected and it's going to be super easy to go back and forth back and forth between both but they're going to be a little bit different I think it's genius personally I think it's going to last um I personally think that the way that they made your feed so good by incorporating the people you already followed is just going to make it last and stick around for longer. And I honestly, Threads has gotten so much good feedback already. Like people that I follow are saying that they love it. Like 
multiple people have said, like, I'm checking threads before I check anything else. Like, I even saw someone that was editing and then had, like, threads pulled up on a little side tab. And it was easy to just, like, see what people were um, threading while they were editing. So, like, new threads pop up every, you know, couple of seconds or minutes. And it's just an interesting thing to kind of look at at the same time. So, I love it. I think it's a little bit challenging as a creator because like I said, it's, you can't rely on photo and video. Like it's basically 100% your words, which is hard if like, I feel like for me, I'm not necessarily the best at like writing and thinking of something witty to say. I follow some creators that are so funny. Um, I don't know if you guys know her, her name's Allison. I think it's Kutch. Um, or something like that. But she's like married to an NFL player. And she's so funny, like already on TikTok and Instagram and stuff. But then she hops on threads and she's like hilarious. Like she doesn't need photo or video. Like she's just a naturally funny person. And I think this can be a little challenging for people, like just having a natural like wit and you don't have to like overthink what you say. Like you just put something out and you're not, you know, scared of threading something, you know, I just feel like that is a little bit challenging and it's something we're going to have to get used to, honestly, because social media for so long has just been photo and video. And even like when it comes to like writing your website or like even writing emails, like you can hire people to do that. And it's super easy to just have a template or, um, you know, hire a copywriter and then it's all done and you don't really have to do any of the writing work. So I think this app is going to be really challenging for creators in that way. Um, but I like it. I would be lying if I said I didn't like it. They also took a platform like Twitter that was already dying. So I feel like Twitter has been like dwindling for a while and, you know, it kind of switched owners and like, like there, Charlie has been telling me that like sports people are really on Twitter and like a lot of memes start on Twitter, but I feel like it, you know, it lost a lot of users. Like we'd be lying if, you know, we didn't acknowledge that. So they took a concept that already worked. Twitter was so popular and just revamped it, made it a little bit more interesting, connected it to your Instagram and boom, here's a concept that already existed. You just kind of put a twist on it and now it's uber successful. I think that's genius. I think it's fun. And like I said, I think it's going to last. So I want to talk about how we as business owners can use threads and it's hard because it literally just launched this week. So I, I'm kind of like, I don't really know, but I I've had some thoughts about threads and I've had some ideas on how you can use it and stuff like that. So I'll just kind of share a little bit of my brainstorming. The first thing straight up that I want to say, like, I don't think that being, businessy and salesy is going to work on threads. Um, I think it's the same way on TikTok. Like the salesy videos don't perform well. Same with threads. I think the people who just authentically show up are going to grow. Um, I think authenticity and honesty and humor, um, personality, like being inspirational, all of those things are going to grow and do well on threads. I think as a business owner, the best thing you can do is to play into that authenticity and not play into it, but literally like give authenticity to your audience. Um, As business business owners, we're going to have to find ways to express ourselves via words. And we can't just thread and be like, I have a session opening tomorrow like reply to this if you want it. Like, I don't think it's going to work like that. Honestly, I think each thread needs to be pretty purposeful and, um, valuable because I think the, the less value you're putting out there on threads, I think someone's just going to mute you to be honest. Like if you're salesy and you're just like, I have a session tomorrow, like a session opening tomorrow. Like, I think you're going to get muted by people to be honest. So I think, like every platform, it's going to be about adding value and how are your threads valuable to other people? That's what you got to think about. So I think another thing for 
threads. <laughs> Sorry, I just kind of lost my train of thought there. Um, don't be too salesy, okay? You're going to lose interest. Just wanted to recap that. Focus on getting replies and reposts. I don't know much about this algorithm right now, but I'm sure the more reposts and replies that you get on a thread, the more it's going to show up on someone's feed. And right now, the only way that you see threads is really just on your feed. So if you're able to get on people's feed, maybe the top of their feed or whatever, like that's better for you. I do think right now threads is chronological. I could be wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure I was going through and it felt chrono- chronological, like as far as the threads go. Um, so that's something to think about as well. Like pay attention to your feed, pay attention to the threads that you see a lot, the ones that are getting reposted or um, the threads that are at the top of your feed and just notice like, okay, what types of threads am I seeing a lot? What are people saying that gets reposted? Like what's the format? These are things that I don't really know yet, but like as we're getting used to a new app, just like pay attention to to those things just to see like what works, right? Um, Switch up what you thread about, okay? I think a lot of the times as photographers and small business owners, we just want to thread about our careers and that's basically it. We don't want to let anyone into our personal lives or anything like that. But I think the more that you can let people in and show them that you're a real person, um, you know, you have things going on in your life, you have a personality. I think that's what's really going to um, help people succeed on threads. So switch up, like if you threaded about a session that you have, like let's say you're so excited for a wedding and like you show a picture of it, whatever, maybe switch up and like the next thread, make it about um, something personal or something funny or whatever. So for example, um, I've been threading and I don't even know if like my strategy is good. It's not even like a strategy at this point. It's kind of just whatever I want to thread about. But I was shooting a wedding and I threaded about how I was so excited to shoot a wedding. And then I threaded about how my husband was jumped in the shower five minutes before we were about to leave. So that was another thread. So, you know, it's kind of like I have a wedding, I'm a business owner, but then here's a personal thing that happened, you know, that morning. And then I took a picture of my camera. It was at 5% battery and I threaded and I was like, this stresses me out, whatever. Like I'm on a party bus. This is my battery charge. So I feel like just kind of adding a little bit of flair and spice to everyday life and putting it on threads. Like that's the move. I do think that photos and videos are not necessarily gonna kill threads. Like what I like about threads is you can just post words, but you also can post a photo and it's just as interesting. Um, and you know, I follow, let's say Kris Jenner. She was in Italy. She posted just a photo of like her view and she was like, what a good morning in Italy. And I think that is a really fun way to use threads. Just like a quick little photo. Basically you just choose one photo or maybe like five photos at the most. And like, that's kind of your thread. I, my first thread was like five photos that I took of this wedding, um, that I recently delivered. Um, and you know, I, I think that worked okay, but then my next thread got like way more engagement and it was just words. Um, so that's something else to think about. Okay. I'm kind of getting off track here. Use threads as a chance to show your personality, but don't forget also be a business. I think witty and inspirational threads are going to be key. I think that threads is basically just going to be another avenue to build brand credibility because right now the people that are on threads and that follow you most likely just came over from Instagram and started following you on threads because they integrated their following list. Um, So right now, the only people that engage with you are probably people that already have previous experience with your brand. So being on threads is just a way to build up that credibility, build up that community. I do think threads is going to get to a point where people are going to find and follow you on threads. Like somehow they're going to find your brand and follow you. Let's say someone replies to your thread and then one of the, that person's followers follows you. That I could see as like a thing that would happen. But right now I think it's just building brand credibility and it's, it's like having a Pinterest in a TikTok in an Instagram. And now we have threads. It's kind of like you're building up this online community and like this online credibility 
for your brand. Okay. The, the, so that's kind of what I'm viewing threads as. I really feel like threads is a place for community. And I think they're really focusing on community in the sense that on your threads feed, you can see like this person I follow replied to this person. You can see replies. You can see like who you follow and what they reply to. So I think it's really focusing in on having this online conversation um, more so than just like, here's pretty pictures and videos. Follow me. You know, I think it's more like, let's have a conversation on threads. Um, yeah. So the only other thing for how we can use threads is um, photos, which I already said that. I don't know why I'm repeating this, but just be intentional. Like don't spam it with a bunch of photos because I could see that not doing great. You know, I think threads is intentionally being a word based platform. So whatever the platform favors, if it's words, you really need to play into that. Just like how TikTok, you know, it focuses on videos. So really, Focus on videos. You know what I mean? So um, that's kind of, those are my <laughs> multiple 20, 26 minutes of talking about threads. But I mean, it's interesting. And I think it's a platform that is going to stick around. So we needed to talk about it. So I have some other trends that I wanted to mention. And these are on other platforms that I've noticed. So first, I wanted to talk about Pinterest. And I mean, I've talked about Pinterest a little bit. I did a Pinterest episode. So if you want like a full breakdown on how to use Pinterest, go back, listen to that episode. That's actually one of my more popular episodes because you guys really, y'all really liked that. I don't know like if I just very clearly told you guys what to do. I was a little bossy in that episode. So maybe that's why (laughs) you guys like being bossed around and told like go post. That's kind of what I did. So Pinterest. This actually is something that I realized this past week. I was doing a mentor call with someone and on my mentor calls, we go through and I screen share and I go through all of their, their Instagram, Facebook, um, Pinterest, TikTok, and obviously just critique what they're doing, let them know what they can do better to help them grow. And I was screen sharing with someone and showing them Pinterest And what I love to do is um, go and I actually, there's this girl that was on one of my very first episodes. Her name's Nikki Kirshner. She's amazing on Pinterest. I always talk about her. But I went to show um, the person that I was mentoring how if you search engagement photos on Pinterest, like all of her photos pop up right away. And I've done this so many times. Like I've Um, you know, done other calls where I've shown people the same thing because she like slays and I search engagement photos and I noticed something that I don't think I would have noticed if I hadn't been doing this thing in my mentor calls. So what I noticed is when you go to search engagement photos on Pinterest, it is no longer the golden hour kind of orange skin tones, like overly edited photos at the beach with like a flowy dress. That's not what pops up when you search engagement photos. If you search engagement photos, we're seeing true to color edits, um, black and white, and almost like a shift in outfits as well. Like girls, specifically like women that are engaged, will wear like puffy white dresses that was all that popped up and like little bouquets kind of like this vintage retro film vibe very like um I want to say like 60s where it's like I'm in a convertible with my sunglasses on the highway I'm wearing this puffy white dress like that was the vibe that popped up when I searched engagement photos and I I was shocked because I knew that photography was kind of shifting in that direction as far as trends go, but to actually see it happen before my eyes, like I literally searched engagement photos the week before all the same photos popped up. It was all kind of the same style. Then I searched engagement photos a week later and the photos that were there, I was so surprised at the change. Now, I do want to say part of that might have to do with my personal Pinterest, like just based on the things that I repin. I do think Pinterest kind of knows my style a little bit. So that could, that could be a thing as well. But I think that's something important to take note of in the photography industry. 
we just want to see what's changing. Like, what are the trends? What's going in? What's going out? Um, and, you know, that's something that I noticed is the more true to color edit, black and white, maybe some blurry. I feel like almost more creative composition and not so much like here's just a beautiful landscape with a beautiful dress and a beautiful couple of beautiful lighting and like a warm edit. Now it's more like um, it's more candid. It's more authentic. I cannot tell you how many people want candid documentary authentic photos, which I've always loved that. But I feel like deep down, I still need to do a few of those like kind of cheesy poses just to like give them to them so they have them. But a lot of people are like, I don't even want like cheesy poses. Like I want all supernatural feeling photos. So yeah, just something to notice specifically on Pinterest. So if you have sessions that look like that, um, maybe you start pinning more black and whites um, or more of like your creative style photos, those are doing really well on Pinterest. Okay. Next TikTok. I wanted to tell you guys a trend that I'm noticing on TikTok. Well, I have two trends. So the first trend, it's been happening for a while, but I, this past month that really was solidified for me, long form content. So the reason I know that TikTok is pushing long form content is because TikTok literally came out with a creative, it's called TikTok creativity program, I think is what it's called. And it's like a beta, um, kind of like TikTok creator fund, but it only applies to your videos that are longer than a minute. Okay. So the normal TikTok creator fund is all of your videos, doesn't matter which one earns a certain amount of money. In this beta creative creator fund that they have, you have to post videos that are longer than a minute and only your videos that are longer than a minute qualify and then they'll pay you for those. And then what I started to notice is when I started posting videos that were longer than a minute, they started performing very well. Like if you just go on my TikTok feed, most of my top performing videos, like my normal views is probably like 10K views. But like if I have a video that's longer than a minute, it'll be in the 30 to 40K on TikTok, which is a lot for me. Like I feel like even like 10K is a lot of views. Like I'm, I'm always still blown away that I can actually get that many views. But like seeing TikTok specifically favor certain types of videos says something to me. So longer form videos, um, I always think about when I'm making these videos that are longer than a minute, how can I capture attention for longer than a minute? Because ultimately TikTok looks at how long are you watching a video? Like, are you keeping people's attention? So those videos that are longer than a minute, really, you really have to think about how am I keeping attention for a minute? And I think the days of you just sitting and talking at the camera are over. Like, I really think integrating um, like random videos that pop into your video. So if you're sitting there and doing a talking video, you're going to overlay videos of you shooting or um, photos of your work or example images. Like, I think it needs to be more than just here's me sitting down talking. Um, and honestly, I'm a little bit of a hypocrite because the video I just posted like a couple days ago was just me sitting down talking. Um, but just to not be a hypocrite, like I know that I do that sometimes, so I'm going to try to be better as well. You know what I mean? So sit down, hit like a longer one minute video. Honestly, some of my videos are literally a minute and one second. Okay. (laughs) So it's not anything crazy. It's not like five minutes long, a minute and one second. Okay. That's all, that's all it takes. The other thing I noticed about TikTok is, and I'm sure you guys have noticed this too, every single video on my For You page, like every other video is a TikTok shop video, okay? And it'll be like the little TikTok link and then the little shop and then someone will be talking about the product that they bought. Honestly, it's made TikTok a little bit annoying and I haven't been loving it. Like I, I pretty much every time swipe past a video that has like the little TikTok shop thing linked. I just feel like there's a time and a place to sell things. And I don't feel like TikTok is the place to like directly be, be like, here's the link. Like I liked how TikTok was before when it was kind of just focused on entertaining people. And then like, if you had an entertaining video of you trying something on, 
then you could be like, oh, like I have this linked if you want to buy it. But it's not, it wasn't so salesy. Now I feel like TikTok is getting really salesy. But TikTok shop videos are performing really well. So that's something else to take note of. I don't know much about TikTok shop. I do know you kind of have to have like a, like physical products that you sell, which as photographers, we don't really have that. But um, yeah, it's just something that exists and that's kind of, it is what it is. And then another thing about TikTok I noticed, always original audios. At this point, I feel like it's basically all original audios on my free page. There are a few songs that will trend. Like right now, um, Olivia Rodrigo's Vampire is trending, like her new song. Like stuff like that will trend or like because The Summer I Turned Pretty is coming out in like literally this week, that like whole Taylor Swift song that's associated with that season is trending, stuff like that. Um, But for the most part, besides like a few trending audios, I really feel like original audios are the way to go, especially if you're doing videos that are longer than a minute, original audios. Okay, I wanted to talk about Instagram as well. Now, I don't have tons of Instagram trend reports because I feel like Instagram is kind of always the same. But something that I have noticed is that there's a little bit more of an emphasis on static images. So not reels or videos, but like here's a post of my 10 photos that has been coming back. I think just Instagram responding to how people feel about reels like that is just Instagram's way of making people happy. Um, so like I would say probably go back to making an emphasis on posting static images, but also posting reels. Um, maybe it's like one or two static posts a week and like one or two reels a week. Like I feel like that would be a healthy balance for Instagram. Reels are important always, obviously, but I do feel like having static images that are quality, like that is back. And I really feel like that does well. Um, specifically posting like photos of you or photos of you shooting. Um, don't, don't skip out on us guys. Like give us the good content. Like don't just post a session because you shot it. You feel like you have to post it, post your best stuff. And if you know what's your best wedding or your best session, post it again. Like you don't have to be shy with it. Like there are, there's just so, there's so many combinations of 10 photos that you can post that you're not going to be repeating images and like no one's going to care if you reap, like if you shot an amazing wedding and then a month later you posted that again, like who cares? Like, it's just a reminder that, Oh, that was a really cool wedding. Like whatever. I think the curated unfiltered content, like the photo dumps, that is definitely here to stay. I would say at least until the end of the year, I could see, a shift in content again, where it kind of goes back to that like travel influencer blog type of content where it was like super edited images all over the world. I think it's going to be kind of, I think it might shift close back to that, but it's more curated shot on iPhone stuff without the heavy filter, but it's still like curated nonetheless. So, you know, back in the day when people would do like these travel blog influencer types of posts like you spend all day figuring out like your outfits and your shot you're shooting like all day whatever I feel like that still happens now but it's it's curated in a different way so it's almost like you are making it look like this experience that you're experiencing and you're just showing everyone what's kind of happening unfiltered even though it's like oh I I walked by this hotel thought it was pretty walked in took a picture of the lobby and like that was one of my photos in my photo dump, you know, like I think it's still going to be curated, but just more iPhone content. Um, and you know, we kind of already knew that. And something else I've noticed lately, I feel like there's a sense of mystery on Instagram. I don't feel like people are doing as much of like, here's my entire life start to finish. Here's what I do when I wake up in the morning. Like here's every second of my day. I think it's more like, creating a mystery aesthetic of like, oops, I'm in Italy. Like, here's a picture. Like, oop, I'm in wherever. Here's a picture. Like, ooh, I shot this wedding. Here's a quick picture. Like, I feel like it's going to be, it's kind of like less, here's a step, my step of my entire day. 
like it's more so like here are just snippets of highlights, but I'm not going to give you like this full dump of like literally every single second of my day. So that's kind of, I feel like Instagram's kind of shifted to that. Okay, guys, I have one other thing I wanted to talk about. This isn't necessarily like a social media app trend, but this is just a trend that I'm sure you guys have noticed, and it's point and shoot cameras. There is just something about like the old school point and shoot cameras. I feel like they just give you this different look to your photos that people are wanting. Um, and I definitely think that like these point and shoot cameras are, they're trendy right now, but for a good reason. Like, I think this is a trend that you might want to hop on just like in your personal life, get yourself like a little cute point and shoot camera to take photos of like your life and stuff. What I love about this point and shoot digital camera trend is how people just like normal people that aren't, let's say like aspiring photographers are getting cameras in their hands and they're doing something besides just using their phone. And the trend with the point and shoot cameras, I feel like really started with these like iPhone apps that like kind of give you that digital camera edit on your photos. And I think, first of all, I think that's really trendy also. It was just like these, this digital camera edit that you can put on your regular iPhone photos. However, people are taking it a step beyond that. And they're like, I want to do something cute and vintage and get something like a point and shoot camera from 2009 and use that to take my, the photos of my friends at this party or, um, for whatever, like this girl's birthday or whatever. So I really feel like point and shoot cameras are super fun. I love them because as a photographer, it's kind of stretching and it forces you to use these like, I don't know, not the best equipment, but still create good photos. Um, so I recently got the Canon power shot and it is actually like I had to get it used because they don't make it anymore. It's actually a camera from like 2005. Like it is literally from like my childhood and I love this camera because I turn the flash on and it gives me like kind of like, I don't know, it's like the preset filter that like the fun color colors that are on these photos from these digital cameras are just like so trendy and it's such a vibe. Like this edit that I get from just like taking a photo on my point shoot camera with the flash during the day. And then putting it, putting it through Lightroom, I do like my creamy dreamy preset, but like I bring my amount down to like 30% or something. That edit is like exactly what I feel like is so trendy right now. But it starts with that digital camera because it gives you like a little bit of a different look. Um, other point shoot cameras that are popular right now, the Canon G7X. At this point, I feel like everyone should know the Canon G7X is like the, the camera of the summer, but it's a little expensive. And then there's like a Fuji film camera that is supposed to be like a film simulator camera. Um, I know Kylie Keitch, I think that's how you say her name, or Kylie Ketch or something like that. She's really popular on TikTok, but she uses this Fuji film simulator camera. It's so good. That one doesn't have a flash, but like that is another one that's like a point and shoot. However, that one's even more expensive than the Canon G7X. Um, but point and shoot cameras, I think that they are around for the summer. I think they're super fun. And honestly, it could be a fun little add-on for your client packages. Um, it could just be like, instead of you offering film, maybe you offer like little point and shoot photos or like maybe you hire an assistant and they just do fun little point and shoot photos for you or something like that. I, one of my sister's friends, this is how I know that like the point and shoot is coming back because one of my sister's friends was like, um, we were like all at this house or whatever. And she like handed me her point and shoot camera and was like, can you take a picture of me? And she had like this super old, like basically it was just like the Canon power shot. I think it was just another brand. And they all were like, oh my gosh, these photos are so cute. And they all went and like posted them. And I think it's like just that, the idea of like, this is something different than my iPhone. It's affordable. I can do it. Like it, you don't have to be a genius to figure it out. Plus that 
direct flash in the middle of the day is super popular. So all of those things to say, the point and shoot camera is the move for the summer, especially if you just want something fun to like document life and just do like fun little photo dumps on your story or something. My Canon power shot was actually $250. So it wasn't expensive at all. And I love it. Like I'm actually obsessed with it. It's so small. It just goes right in my pocket. I'm obsessed. Okay, guys, <laughs> that's all I have to say about trends for this week. Next week, I think I will have a guest on the podcast. I'm trying to think. Yes. Next week, I have a guest on the podcast. And then the week after, we'll probably do an advice column. So I'll repost my advice column link. If you want advice on anything, we're going to go through and talk through some of your photography problems and what you guys have going on. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you loved it. And that's all I have. So have a great, amazing rest of your day.